Welcome class. We are starting activity 5.4, Advanced CAD Tools. Um, also, we are working on the Castle project. The timing might be a little weird. I've, in, I've introduced this project to some classes. It's mainly a Genius Hour project, but in this activity, I'm going to teach you some of the tools that you will use in the Castle project. So I figured you could just build parts of the castle today. Um, so I would open up this project and activity 5.4. Now, here's the project. Uh, you need to sketch your initial ideas, but don't worry about that during class. You can do that during genius hour. Today, I just want you to start building uh, some of the features. Practice with some of the features by building some of the uh, some of the items on the castle project. But 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 look over this real quick to see what you need. Maybe do a little bit of research to see what you need. But we can start by building a few towers and stuff like that. Um, the this write up for today's activity is pretty short. All I have is. Implement each of these features in your castle project. There are eight of them here. And then this says, paste the screenshot of your part file here. You must include the part browser in your image so I can see each of those features. If you have each feature, you're good. You just paste that image, then you'll get 100 as long as you do these conclusion questions as well. There are not very many of those. So um, go to Inventor, start a project, and you need a new project. I kind of already created one, but I'll show you how to do it. New single user project. We've gone over this several, several times. Project name could be Castle Project, that's fine. Castle Project, but make sure you are not in the C drive. Don't do the C drive, don't do it, because if you change desks, you won't be able to access your stuff. It'll be under this PC, this PC, and down after the C drive, you'll have H, H drive with your name. It'll be blah, 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 H. So make sure you're in your H drive when you save all this stuff. So Castle Project is what you need to be in, uh, and then hit done whenever you're in your Castle Project. New part is what you can start with today. So the first thing I'm teaching you is a revolve, the revolve tool. Check out my mic when DJ revolves it. Uh, so start 2D sketch, X, Y plane, just like always. Now what you do with the revolve tool is you're basically um, creating, let me just create a short little tower for you. I want your, your castle to be several hundred inches um, wide overall, so you might have to rescale this, but I'm just doing this kind of fast to show you. What you're doing with Revolve is you first have to create a closed feature. You have to create a closed feature. And by the way, if you hover over um, any of these tools, you'll see a tool tip. Press F1 for more help, okay. F1, and then it goes to the help uh, help page for Revol Revolution. So this might help some. There are plenty of videos on on YouTube or anything else, I want you to start to advocate for your own learning, but here's what I'm teaching you. The Revolution Revolve Tool, what does it say down here? Select, select axis. You actually need to select the profile first, okay? Profile. Oh, that's because it only, I only had one profile. So select the profile. It's this whole shape here, select the axis. It's usually um, whatever you chose as the center. Okay, and then it revolves around that axis. So it takes that little thing and revolves it around. You're gonna have to kind of use some spatial reasoning here. It revolves my profile all the way around in a circle to create that kind of shape. Uh, okay, so that's a very simple tower. If I wanted to do a separate tower, let me just delete all this junk. Delete consume sketches. Yeah, it's gonna delete my entire sketch, which is fine. I'll start from scratch. Um, there's another cool way of doing it. You can import an image and it doesn't have to be in your um, in your project folder, but I chose this image of a castle because I kind of like the tower that it has. So here is my tower. Um, and again, you want only half of the cross section, not the entire thing. So I put my center line right at the halfway mark there. Uh, and perhaps I should put in a uh, point here. At the top here, make sure that's right at X, uh, the zero inches for X, and it looks like it is. Okay, so we're good there. Um, now I just need to trace it out with some lines. So you might want to use some arcs too, depending on what kind of tower you have. Uh, but I can trace this out. Maybe I can do dinky dink, come in a little bit. You can zoom way, way in to make sure you're getting it good, but I don't care for the purpose of this uh, presentation. I don't want these crenellations right here, so I'm gonna go out a little bit, just kind of forget about that stuff. Uh, maybe I will go deep inside like this. Uh, you can bump out, you know, kind of like what this thing does here. And I'm gonna skip that one to make it faster, but then I go down until um, I am 
yeah, level with that. And then this will be a uh, flat line. Make sure you join into your other point. Make sure you're coincident with this point. Green dots. Green dots are coincident. So that way, now I have a, um, a fully closed sketch. If you want, you can toggle the, the visibility of your image so you can see your sketch a little bit better. And then you can turn that back on over there. Um, but let's finish our sketch and now we'll do a revolution. That's my profile. It already selected it. My axis is the center line. And that looks a little bit better for a tower. You can add the other stuff later. Okay, next thing, a hole. Uh, holes are easy and you might have to kind of get creative on how you want to put the holes in here, what kind of holes you want to put. But remember, you can't sketch on a curved surface. You can't sketch on a curved surface. First, you need um, a point. First, you need a point. So I might uh, create a plane. Maybe I'll create a plane um, parallel to a plane and tangent to this thing. So tangent here and parallel to one of my origin planes, maybe um, XY, because I like XY. So parallel to XY and tangent to one of these others. Is it going? Uh, let me try again. Plane, um, tangent to maybe this thing. Parallel here. Okay, maybe that might not work, but offset, I could offset it uh, from this plane. I can pull it off until I kind of see my my shape going away. Yeah, it won't be tangent unless it's a straight line on the edge there. Okay, so keep that in mind. But now I've got a, a plane. I need a sketch for my plane, or on my plane rather, and I need to put points wherever I want my holes. I'm just gonna kind of make some stuff up for now. Okay, um, and then I can use the whole tool. So my whole starts using those sketches. Again, you might have to be creative. It might look better on a flat surface, but I've got all kinds of different holes here. Uh, counter bore, counter sink. The counter sinks might look kind of cool. I can change the size of my counter sink. Um, maybe I can make that 0 0.5. 0 0.5, so it'll be a little bit bigger. Um, make the depth overall of one inch, yeah, something like that. This is kind of crappy, but um, you do need some holes in your castle somewhere. All right, um, I don't like the look of my work plane right there. It's kind of getting annoying, so I can make that invisible uh, visibility. You can always turn work planes on and off, but you need work planes to sketch on a curved surface. Next, circular pattern. Circular pattern and rectangular pattern are very similar. I'll demonstrate both. So um, you can do this on a sketch or a feature, a 3D feature. So inside, you know, I'm not inside my sketch, but I still have these pattern tools, circular pattern, rectangular pattern. And again, I can use that for a sketch or a, um, or a 3D feature. Circular pattern, it says select the feature, select features for the pattern. So features, I want my tower, I want my tower. Next, you need a rotation axis. Now, I don't really have a rotation axis because my, my y-axis is right here in the middle. If I try to rotate, uh, try to create a circular pattern all the way around that, it won't work because it's through the center of my, uh, of my feature itself. So I'm gonna have to create another axis. I might have to create another axis. Um, so you can create a, an, another sketch, um, maybe on this plane, and then maybe I can just put a point uh, somewhere out here, okay? Uh, next, I can create an axis. Axis, <clears throat> normal to plane through a point. Normal means perpendicular to the XY plane through that point. So now I've got that axis going up and down. Whenever you, whenever you say a circular pattern, circular pattern, the feature what you want here is gonna be like this. And then that axis, um, whenever you create the, the circular pattern, the axis needs to be a point, okay? Axis goes, up and down, and then your circular pattern goes around the axis. Okay, and that makes sense. So uh, I can make, you know, seven, 78, don't do 78, but however many things you want around the circular pattern, that's fine, 360 degrees. You just, you will you will dimension it by dimensioning how far out this, um, this axis is. Okay, I didn't dimension it, but I've got it there. Now, I, notice it didn't take my holes. So uh, if, if I wanted, the circular pattern, I might need to select more features. I might need to se select more features. So maybe I can edit this features. I want these holes as well. See how my holes popped up now? 
Okay, that's only if you want those holes. Maybe one, maybe only one of my towers got attacked, but now I've got a circular pattern. Um, let me delete this circular pattern though, so, so, so I can demonstrate something else. The rectangular pattern. Next, rectangular pattern right here. Uh, so I am just demonstrating, but you can do whatever you want for rectangular pattern. Features, uh, you wanna select the features. I want my tower. Uh, now, this one's kind of tricky. I, I want a direction, but in order to select the direction, on the sketch, it's going to be a little bit different. On the sketch, you have to select a line. So click any line, and you'll kind of see an arrow pop up. But for a, for a feature, for a feature, you've got to select a plane. And then uh, see my arrow of where my rectangular pattern is going is always perpendicular to that plane that I've selected. Okay, so maybe I want my first direction. Uh, maybe I want my first direction to, to be that way. And then I can say this is, uh, let's see, I think this is the number that I want. So if I want three or five of them, that's there. But this is the spacing. So maybe I want five inches between them. All right, so I've got pretty good. Now, if I want a second direction, this is just for a line. A rectangle in one dimension is a line, I guess. Uh, a second direction, I can pick another plane. Let's choose that one. So there's my direction there. And you can flip the direction either way. Okay, that's how you flip it. Maybe I want it to go this way. Again, spacing of five, that makes it nice and even. And maybe I want five. So now I've got 25 hours. It's kind of stupid for a, for a uh, castle, but whatever. Um, that's how you do the rectangular pattern there. And again, if you wanted all those features, if you wanted all those features, you would have to go change the features selected. Uh, features. I want, to, I want to add more features. Come on. Add more features. And then pick the holes as well. There we go. And it picks all my holes. Okay, that's rectangular pattern. Next, sweep. All right, using some movie magic, I have changed the appearance of my uh, rectangular pattern here. So what I want to do next is a sweep. What I want to do next is a sweep. Here's a good example. You need two things, a profile and a path. The profile on this example is kind of that rounded rectangle. Then the path that it travels down is that S. So um, to, to create those two things, you need two perpendicular planes, one for the profile, whatever it looks like, one for the path that it's going to travel. I'm going to create, I'm going to create a, um, a, a handrail for my, um, for my bridge here. So I want to create a, uh, a sketch in the center of this tower, and that's gonna be my profile, and then another sketch through the center of this tower is perpendicular to it, and that's gonna be the profile that it's gonna, that it's gonna make, a, a, a bridge that goes out like this. So I could start a 2D sketch, but I wanna make sure that I'm in the right plane first. And this, this is the plane that I want. Yep, so I don't need to create a work plane. I can just start a sketch on that plane. Again, you can always hit uh, the plane first and then start 2D sketch or start 2D sketch and then the plane. It's up to you. Now, I wanted to sketch, make my sketch inside my tower, but I can't see it. I can't see the middle of it. So a cool feature here is right click anywhere inside the sketch, slice graphics. Boom, half of my tower went away. Now I know exactly where I'm sketching. So uh, I want to create you know, whatever sketch you want here, um, I want to create something that looks a little bit like this. And I want to trim the inside so I have one profile here. And like I said, you can make whatever you want here. This is just what I want to make. Okay, um, let me go home again. I like having things set up isometrically. So that is my sketch. You can see it inside my tower. Now I want a perpendicular sketch on a plane, but uh-oh, my my other perpendicular plane is way over there. So I need to create a work plane. Probably the best one in my case is offset from this plane. And uh, my rectangular tool that I created here is actually 10 inches. That's why it's important to have dimensions on all these and not just go about willy-nilly. So 10 inches here creates this work plane that's uh, go, cutting straight through the middle of this tower and perpendicular to my other plane, this uh, this XY plane, perpendicular to my profile. Okay, remember this is just a representation of the plane. The actual plane goes infinitely forever in all directions. So if, even if I'm sketching on here, I can end up sketching, you know, crap way out here and it's still on that plane. It's still on that plane. Um, See, it, this representation just doesn't 
it doesn't show it here. So don't worry too much about what that shape of the warp plane looks like. That's still the infinite plane in that dimension, see? Uh, let me go back inside my sketch. Let me delete some of this. Bang, 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 bang. Uh, so what I really want, let me slice my graphics. I love doing that. What I really want is to be on that point here. I kind of want an arc to be my profile. On this point, is it going to snap to that point? Um, I think it is snapping to that point, okay? You might have to project your geometry into your sketch, but sometimes it will snap. So here's what I want. I want my bridge to kind of make that uh, path to kind of be swept around that path. But now, uh, my, my stuff is inside this tower. I kind of want this tower to go away for now, but I don't, want to, I don't want to delete it. So I can suppress it. If I suppress it, it goes away per, uh, temporarily, but... I can always unsuppress the feature. Okay, so let's make it transparent by suppressing it. Now I've got my stuff going on here. Notice I didn't put it exactly in the center. You can change that. You can change that, but I'm just going to make it uh, this way for now. Sweep, profile, it kind of already selected my profile. It was smart. Path, here's my path. Here's my path, and there's my sweep. Okay, pretty cool, and I can turn this, turn this pattern back on. Unsuppress feature, so I've got that that bridge coming out there. Cool. Next, let's do a mirror. A mirror is going to be something pretty cool. You can do mirrors in sketches or in 3D features. I'm going to do it in the feature because this is what I've got already. A mirror in a sketch. You just need a line, right? Because you're already in two dimensions. You need a, a line, a axis. Uh, your mirror, mirror line, mirror axis, line of symmetry, right? Um, to, to create your geometry and then to mirror it on the other side. But for a, for a feature, a whole 3D feature, it would be like saying, you know, I want this coaster and to be mirrored with this coaster. Now, uh, I could put it like up here or over here or over here, or I could kind of angle it, right? So I need a whole plane, I need a mirror plane or a plane of symmetry, mirror plane. And that's what it says on my tooltip here. So to create a plane, again, offset from plane, I can offset it from this one, offset it by not 10 this time, but half of that, because I want it to be perfectly mirrored. So half of whatever you've got, that's my mirror plane. So mirror is pretty easy. You pick the feature. I For my feature, I want my sweep. For my mirror plane, I want this plane, and there it is. It mirrored that over. Okay, so that's mirror. Next, intersect extrusion. If the state of my hair is any reflection on my frustration level, it should be evident to you that I don't want to do intersect extrusion anymore. <laughs> intersect extrusion, I've discovered, is useful in a very specific set of circumstances, which I don't believe we will ever come across, especially not in the castle project. So I'm changing that to extrude with taper. That's going to be a lot better. Extrude with taper, I will demonstrate uh, with a window. I want to create a sort of window here. So I, uh, I'm going to extrude that into or cut into my tower here. Again, I probably need a plane offset from this one is good. Let's offset it. I can just click and drag uh, until I kind of get to the end here. That's good. I'm going to put it in this area here. So uh, let's create a 2D sketch. Let's see. I might want a rectangle. And yours should probably be nice and centered. But I'm just kind of going fast here. Here, up to, eh, that's about good enough. Right there, and uh, don't forget to trim so you have one uh, fluid geometry, one closed geometry there instead of a couple, because the taper will be weird if you don't. So trim everything so you have one closed geometry. Let's extrude it. Let's go backwards. Let's make sure we are not creating new material by joining, but it's instead cutting material out. So quarter inch is good here. Uh, now, under more, this is my taper. Taper angle, if you make it positive, that's going to taper away from your sketch. Um, I don't want that for my window. I want it to taper inwards. So I need it to be negative. Negative 15. Let's exaggerate it so you can actually see what's going on here. Negative 30. That's, uh, that's going to be kind of pretty. Maybe 30 is too much, but you can mess with that taper angle and, and see what you've got. Okay, last thing is a loft. 
So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what Loft does and then how to create it. A sweep takes one profile and sweeps it around the, the path. A loft, though, can use several different profiles, so the cross-section will change if you want it to. So I'm going to demonstrate by creating the mock, which is the hill that the castle sits upon. So I can start a 2D sketch on the ground plane, the XZ plane. I'm just going to do a very simple, do a uh, rectangle tool around my my towers here. Okay, with when you create a loft, you have to make sure you have a closed geometry. Plus another uh, plane, I want to make mine offset to the crown. I want it to go down because the hill is going to grow as it goes down um, towards you know the center of the earth. So I created that work plane. Here's another sketch. And this one, I want it to be kind of uh, a big circle here. So now that I've got the two closed geometries, all I do here is select the loft tool and it says sections, click to add. Okay, so I wanna add a section, maybe that one, click to add another section. Let's do this one, there we go. Uh, so that created my, my mod here. It's not great, maybe I should have made my circle bigger and uh, the work plane not so far down, but you can go back and change it. And obviously I'm gonna have to change the, the distances here of my of my uh, bridge here if I want it to, to go to, to meet the ground out here but um, that's about all that I have for you all of these tools are in my sketch or in my part so I need to you know create a snip of them just like this this would work for your submission